Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I wanted to get into Genesis, the 38th chapter. And as you can see, the title of this video, The Chaotic Origins of the Tribe of Judah. All right. And the tribe of Judah ultimately are one of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. In particular, the fourth son of Jacob. OK. Through Leah. All right. In which as we go throughout the volume of the book, the Bible all right, we find out as we're reading here in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, for it is evident that our Lord, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, sprang out of Judah, okay, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And that's very important because the priesthood, all right, for the nation of Israel were set, all right, as the mediators, all right, and were very important in our connection. In relationship with our power, the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay, under the first covenant, okay, the priests were associated, and you being a priest or of a priestly uh, role within the temple or within the nation was predicated upon you being born through the tribe of Levi. All right, if you were going to be a high priest, it was predicated upon you being born through the loins and lineage of Moses's brother Aaron okay so when you go into the scriptures all right we find out that the true high priest that's going to reconcile us back to the heavenly father according to prophecy was going to spring out of the tribe of Judah which is very very important for us as Israelites and is something that we should understand as we go into this history because Judah is the head tribe, okay? The tribe chosen by the Most High himself in which he was going to bring his only begotten son into the earth through, all right? So that's why it says here, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. This is the book, all right? Let's, over, uh, let's start at uh, Psalms 78 and 67, all right? Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim. All right. Now, as you go through the history of the Israelites after Solomon's sin, okay, um, the tribes were split between northern and southern kingdom. All right. The southern kingdom consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right. And then you had the northern kingdom, which were the rest of the tribes. Okay. When you go through the history, all right, of Judah, and Ephraim, which was split after Solomon's uh, sin as a curse, you know, um, which pretty much that was the last time all 12 tribes were together. It was under David and Solomon, which are of the tribe of Judah. Uh, but after the split, you know, which we went into the uh, Assyrian, you know, the, the, the northern tribes went into the Assyrian captivity. The southern kingdom went into the Babylonian captivity. Um you will find out that, you know, none of the uh, kings of the northern kingdom, <laughs> you know, uh, did good. There was one that did OK, but he eventually went off. All right. Now, when you go through the tribe of Judah. OK, and um, ultimately look at the kings that sat on the throne of David, you know, uh, throughout that history, about seven of them did right. OK. And the last one being Josiah, all right? But it was promised to David that one of his descendants would eventually sit on his throne and rule forever, okay? So Judah, all right, was the tribe who pretty much was um, responsible, along with Benjamin and Levi as well, as you go through throughout the history, for sticking to the traditions and keeping the customs, all right, and eventually... Uh, dwelling around the temple as a matter of fact real quick uh let's get this real quick it's in the book of hosea okay hosea 11 and 12 it says ephraim compassed me about with lies all right so the northern kingdom would 
completely off and then eventually they left the Assyrian captivity and came over here to the Americas. So they were looked at as castaways. They was looked at as not a part of Israel, all right, by Judah. All right, they were looked at as uh, no people, like they gave up on the Lord, all right. But Ephraim compassed me about with lies. They went completely off in the house of Israel with deceit. Now, you did have members of the northern kingdom, all right, who um, stuck to the script and did good, all right, but overall, Okay, uh, they, they were joined unto idols. They completely went left. But Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. All right, and that's uh, speaking of the actual tribe of Judah and also Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who throughout, you know, they uh, went through the Babylonian captivity. There was always a remnant, all right, who stuck to the temple, stuck to the traditions, all right, leading all the way up through the, uh, the Greek Empire, you know, the Maccabees, who were of the Levites, all right? You had Judites and them, uh, Benjamin joined to them as well. But, uh, and then leading up to the, the Roman Empire, it was Judah, okay, who ultimately stuck to the traditions and remained uh, what you call in the spirit circumcised. And that's when Yahweh Shai came onto the scene, born through the loins and lineage of David. And um, you had a, a, a remnant through Judah, who stuck to the tra traditions, and he gathered from amongst the circumcision those who were raised in the customs, all right, and then eventually, all right, uh, salvation would be opened up to those who weren't raised in the customs and were considered castaways. They were brought back through the true high priest, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So Judah, all right, yet ruled with the Most High and is faithful with the saints. So when you look at the history of the kings of Judah, all right, and the history of the kings of um, the northern kingdom. As a matter of fact, let's bring up a chart real quick. All right. Real quick. This is a chart. Okay. Um, get this out of here. Dealing with the uh, kings of Judah. Okay. 925 to 586 BC. Okay, it starts with Rehoboam, the direct son of Solomon. All right, and then you go through the northern kingdom. All right, which uh, ultimately was started by Jeroboam, which I believe he was of Judah as well. All right, but eventually uh, you had those of the, uh, the, the northern kingdom sit on the throne. And as you can see here, all of these did evil. Okay, the northern kingdom, all of them did evil. Jeroboam, which was the head of it, all right, but Nadab, uh, all of these, Omri, Ahab, which he went completely off, Simpin, okay, all of these did evil. Jerome, Jehu, he did all right, but he ultimately, uh, you know, went off. But yeah, Jeroboam was one of Solomon's servants. And he ruled over uh, the northern kingdom for a while. He did evil. Uh, and the rest of these just completely went off. Okay. Completely went off. All right. But when you go to the uh, southern kingdom, Judah, Rehoboam, he went off. Abijam, he went off. Asa did right. Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, he did right. All right. And as you keep going, you have this... Uh, you know, on and off, you, know, you would have a wicked one. Some did good in the beginning and did bad when they got older. Amaziah, <laughs> all right, which his pastime was throwing Edomites off of mountains, but eventually started worshiping the gods of the Edomites. Okay, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz went off. Hezekiah, we know about him, took down the altars that his fathers built. All right, so Judah, all right, the last of Judah, uh, to sit on the throne of David that did good was Josiah. And then after that, Jake was just going, going completely off. All right. But it was promised to David that ultimately one of his descendants on down the line would sit on the throne and eventually rule forever. 
All right. And that is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He would come out of the loins and lineage of Judah. OK, as a matter of fact, let's get this Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. OK, so according to uh, the first covenant, you would have to be of the loins and lineage of Levi. All right. But the high priest that was going to come and bring us back to the most high and, and, and act as a mediator. All right. And the heavens <laughs> would come through the loins and lineage of David. OK, this is the book of Genesis 49 and 8. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. OK, and that's ultimately in the spiritual sense as well. All right. All of the tribes look up to Judah. OK, but ultimately this would uh, the, the, the kingship that the Lord established in the temple would be all established by Judah. OK, and we're going to be brought back to our father through one who came through the loins and lineage of Judah. OK, so thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. And that's all going to be fulfilled through who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. But again, Judah is the head tribe. OK, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. All right. Meaning there was a point where we got docile. OK. And when when Judah is docile and detached, all of the tribes are docile and detached. This is why Esau has put so much money into keeping you so-called Negroes. In a, in a stupefied state and he constantly presents you all right in mainstream media as a buffoon okay because it's a war that he's uh at with the with the most high himself to keep that head tribe all right uh, uh destroyed and according to prophecy really quick let's get deuteronomy the 33rd chapter and I'm just laying the groundwork before we get into the the chaotic origins, because as you find out, <laughs> it wasn't a peaches and cream story. Just as you look at the tribe of Judah today. All right. It's filled with many mishaps. OK, <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, craziness. Well, the heavenly father operates in chaos and the Lord. Uh, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right. Came through the lineage all right but it was with much chaos <laughs> and as you'll see uh you know it's it's ups and downs within the story of how this uh, particular tribe was uh brought about in our history this is the book of deuteronomy 33 and 7 it says this is the blessing of judah all right this is moses um before he's getting ready to go back to the spirit world you know, uh, blessing and prophesying unto his children of, you know, their future and particular things that would happen with them. It says, and this is the blessing of Judah. He said, hear Yahweh, the voice of Judah. So if you look amongst the tribes, the tribe of Judah has been used as a catalyst to keep, you know, the, 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 the spirit, so to speak. Because if you look at the curse of particular tribes, Judah doesn't have any togetherness, but Judah has the spirit. OK, a connection, you know, to where, you know, uh, uh, with the with the power. OK. And the Lord has raised up a remnant of Judah in these latter days. OK. Um, to do what? You know, to stand up, preach, prophesy, which has leading to all of the tribes being brought back into the Lord. And this is the prophecy right here. All right. And this is what got these devils scared. OK. Uh, it says in the book of um, Isaiah 19, real quick, Isaiah the 19th chapter, real quick, let's read this in the NLT, it says, just to speak the name of Israel will terrorize them, the Lord of heaven, heaven's armies has laid out his plans against them. And let's read it in the King James. It says, and the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that make it mention thereof shall be afraid in himself. 
This is a prophecy of what's happening right now. All right. Judah is becoming a terror unto Egypt because Judah is starting to wake up. Which is the last thing these devils wanted to see. OK, because they know now all of the tribes are being gathered as we're getting ready to show you. Everyone that make a mention of the Hebrew Israelites. All right. What is it always centered around? What is it always synonymous with black? The black Hebrew Israelites. It's, it's got people scared. Now people are like, we got to stop this. So the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt, spiritual Egypt that we're in. Everyone that make it mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, which you have determined against him. So Judah would stand up with a message in the latter days that would have people afraid. All right. And also Jake. All right. Who who awaken up even uh, in their ignorance. That is a terror unto people to see Jake. All right. Uh, looking at the, the heathen as enemies and, and, and trying to make sense of things. And, you know, that that. You know, is is a terror unto these devils, man. So going back to the the prophecy here in Deuteronomy thirty three, it says, "And this is the blessing of Judah." He said, "Hear Yahweh, the voice of Judah." All right, Lord, hear him, bring him unto his people. And how has Judah been brought unto his people in these latter days? Okay, throughout history, Judah was brought to the people and used uh, as a catalyst to keep the connection alive to keep things going all right but he's brought judah to the highways and the byways here in these latter days you see even uh when you look at you know uh kanye and Kyrie, you know who knows what tribe they're from but they're israelites i believe they're of the tribe of judah Kyrie may be of the tribe of gad or his mom is of the uh the uh the northern tribes i believe his dad just may be judah but th this is the thing the lord used two so-called black men to 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 to, to kind of stir things up the israelites being or the jews being linked with so-called black all right has been used as the lord as a point to bring all right the elect who may be in ignorance right now but eventually as they research and find their way they saw kanye they saw Kyrie, they see uh, uh this documentary they see all of these things happening all right um but ultimately, the true message is what the Lord is focused on. But he's using Jake, Judah, period, to stir things up. All right. Which ultimately is going to be used as a means to bring forth the elect anyway. So it says, bring him unto his people. All right. And uh, the, the Judah has been brought into the highways and the byways. All right. Popping up. All right. Benjamin and Levi as well. All right. But Judah is where the focus is. When people see Judah do something. OK, they pay attention. All right. And the powers that be try to destroy it. It says, let his hands be sufficient for him because that 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 being in that leadership role and being of the tribe of Judah comes with a large responsibility. OK. And it says, and be thou and help to him from his enemies. So there you go. Be thou and help to judah from his enemy so judah has been used in these latter days all right as in past times to be at the forefront so to speak of uh pushing israel and keeping the traditions and customs alive okay so genesis 49 and eight it says judah thou art he whom thy uh, brethren shall praise Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. The Lord would always use Judah to stay on Esau's ass in some shape, form or fashion. See. So why, you know, while all of the tribes sort of look down on Judah. All right. You can't deny. The presence and the importance of the tribe of Judah. All right. As the Lord has blessed us with the spiritual blessing from on high to go out there and push this word. All right. And now all of the tribes are being gathered according to prophecy. We just read that that would happen. It says thy father's children shall bow down before thee. That would be through, you know, of course, King David, uh, Solomon and eventually Yahushua. The kings will come through that lineage as we showed you. OK, which that's a whole nother lesson in itself. Maybe one day we'll go through all of those kings and just do history lesson. All right. It says Judah is a lion's whelp. 
from the prey, my son, the heathen, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched down as a lion, and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. <laughs> right, right now, Judah is that old lion, all right, who's being roused up through the Holy Spirit. Okay, because Judah became docile, we stooped down, crouched down. All right, but we wasn't uh, uh, doing nothing. The prey were able to just forward their lies, uh, 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 their, their, their idols, all right, lie, bring out all kind of bad and wicked history that, that, that lied on the true narrative. All right, but as Judah has been roused up, okay, the, the, uh, the, the truth, okay, is being spread throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay, and the and the and the, the, the prey, the heathen are scared. It says the scepter shall not depart from Judah. All right, meaning the, the, the rulership. Okay? Nor a lawgiver from between his feet, meaning Judah is gonna be the one to bring the law. We go through the history of Israel and we hear about the Le Levitical priesthood, the Levites. But overall the Lord said he was gonna bring the true high priest, his only begotten son, he was going to come through the loins and lineage of Judah. Okay. Which when you go into the name Judah, will show you the name of the most high is within him. All right. It says, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. All right. That's the one who brings the law until Shiloh come. Which is Yahweh Shai. And unto him shall be the gathering of the people. All right, unto him, unto Shiloh, the one who's going to bring peace. Let's look up this word Shiloh. It's basically tranquility, peace. All right. Shiloh. Sha. Sha ya la. Okay. He who it is, that which belongs to him, tranquility. Okay, tranquility. The root word, shalah, to be at rest, to be quiet, to be at ease. When you go to uh, the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the, t the, uh, the scripture tells you of his kingdom, peace, there shall be no end of peace under him. So this is Shiloh, and this is a prophecy of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which was to be the lawgiver, the high priest. Okay? Binding his foal into a vine. His ass is colt unto the choicest vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes, meaning all of the destruction he's going to come to bring. And he did come on an ass. He came on an ass when he came as a man. All right. As a meek and, 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 and humble sacrifice. But when he comes as a as a as an angelic force in his heavenly body as the son of the most high. All right. He's going to come to destroy all right. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth shall be white with milk, which is symbolic of the riches he, he, he'll he have. OK, he's going to have all the, 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 the field. All right. And his teeth. All right. White with milk. All right. This word milk. When you go into it. Because kings were the ones who, you know, had a lot of wine and a lot of you know, milk and cattle and things like that. All right. But right here, the word is halab, halab. All right. And just to get to the, the, the point abundance of the land, metaphorically of the abundance of the land. So it's metaphorically of his riches. And all of this is going to be given unto Yahweh Shai, the fatness of the earth, which will be shared. OK, with his people. But that will only be done through. The one who's going to come out of Judah. OK, let's go back to Hebrews 7 and 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. OK, so that goes into history, prophecy, but our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. OK, and as you go to precepts linked to this, it takes you to Ruth, which will show you why that's important. Uh, Isaiah 11, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, which was Jesse was the father of David and a branch shall grow out of his roots, showing you that our Lord came from this particular lineage, according to the Bible. OK, specifically out of the line of Judah. Now, let's go to. 
the book of Genesis, the 29th chapter, when Judah is born. Okay? Genesis 29 and 34, and she conceived again. Who's the she? Leah. All right? By Jacob. One of uh, Jacob's wives was Leah. All right? Which means weary. Okay? She conceived again and bare a son and said, Now... This time will my husband be joined unto me. This is speaking of Levi, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name was called Levi. Loya means joined unto me. All right. It says, and that's how we were joined unto the father under that first covenant through the tribe of Levi. OK, we're going to be joined to him through under the second covenant through the one who came through Judah. All right. Which means what? Yahweh praises. This is the book of Genesis 29 and 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise Yahweh. Therefore, she called his name Yahawada and left bearing. All right. Let's look up the name. All right. Notice here. She says, now will I praise Yahweh. That's what his name means. All right. Praise Yahweh or Yahweh praises. Okay. So the name of the Lord is in Judah. All right. If the name of the Lord was Ahiah, this would have been Ahiada. OK, not Yahawada. The name of the Lord is Yahawah. And as you can see, Yahawah Da. Da is shortened for Thawada or praise. All right. Thank you. When somebody says the water, they're saying thank you or they're praising you for the act that you uh, did for them. So we praise the most high through giving us Judah. OK. Who 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 eventually he would bring forth the one who was to bring us back to him for eternal life. Yahawada. OK. It says Judah is praised. So the name of the most high is within Judah. OK, Yahawada. That's the, 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 the name of the uh, son, the fourth son of Jacob, which four is synonymous with mercy. OK. There you go. This is the tribe of Judah. In its origins. So we're going to go to the book of Genesis, the 38th chapter. Now, it's uh, also another thing to note. Is that when uh, Joseph, all right, was uh, sold off into Egypt, which is a history within itself. We have scriptures on that. You know, all the rest of the tribes plotted against Joseph. OK, they wanted to kill him. They, you know, they wanted to leave him to starve and die off as they got him in this pit uh, because of their jealousy, because he was he was Jacob's favorite son. OK, but um, they were plotting against him here in Genesis, the 37 chapter. All right. And it's one thing to note here as they're plotting, you know, should we, you know, just cast him into a pit? All right. We, we don't want to kill him ourselves. You know, they were just trying to figure out how to get him out of the way because they were jealous that he had such a connection with Jacob and that the Heavenly Father gave him dreams and all manner of things. They were jealous. OK, but when they were thinking that they were going to put him to death and leave him to die. All right. Judah. Here in verse 26. OK, um, although they were all being wicked, Judah came to the conclusion and said unto his brethren, what profit is it that we slay our brother and conceal our blood and conceal his blood? Why will we kill him? Why don't don't let's not do that. All right. Because if they did do that, that would have messed up our whole the the the, the history of our whole nation. <laughs> We'd be through, okay. So what the heavenly Father had Judah come to the conclusion to sell him to the Ishmaelites, which is still wicked. This is not something to celebrate, but at the same time, Judah was the level-headed one to say, "Well, look, you know what? Um, let's not put him. To, let's not have him die." Let's just sell him to the Ishmaelites, which the Ishmaelites eventually sh sold him into Egypt. OK, and Joseph's integrity throughout this whole thing is, is phenomenal. It's a very, very beautiful story you should read. But Judah was the one 
who said, what profit is it that we slay our brother and conceal his blood? And that's very, very important, man. So when you go throughout the scriptures, uh, particular men of the tribe of Judah have been very, very important to our history. When Moses uh, was holding up uh, the uh, staff, I forget what he was holding up. Um, it was a Levite and a Judite, I believe, that uh, it was that helped him, you know, to keep his hands up, you know, to where prophecy can be fulfilled. So Judah, although we're looked at in these times as, you know, just a bunch of buffoons and, you know, a nigga, you know, you can sing and dance, which, you know, that goes into our history as well. Um, Judah is very, very uh, important in our history um and the lord uses judah as the head tribe okay and when judah is on point judah is on point when judah is off point judah is all the way off point but judah is very very necessary and needed uh for our nation and the lord uses judah for a very very important lot now a thing to understand about the bible is that genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy act as the torah the law that was written and given to us by our forefather moses so when you read the the the, the bible let's get the book of uh second edges the 14th chapter and let's just get to the point at verse three then said he unto me in the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talk with him when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount where I held him for, by me for a long season. Notably, 40 days and 40 nights. Moses was able to go up to the top of the mountain. OK, and um, ultimately the Lord endowed on him you know the our history you know going back to the heavens you know in the beginning how the heavenly father used the angels the Allah Hayyam, to create everything um he gives him the, the the history of adam um you know leading all the way up to the uh, story in egypt okay moses recorded this history for us through the most high god yahweh all right through his angel who was in that pillar <laughs> that uh, hovered over this mountain and Mo Moses went up there and that's how we get this history. However, how it is written and presented unto us is in a very abridged way. Let's look up the word abridged. A bridge means shorten by condescending or rewriting, cut or shorten. All right. So everything that Moses saw, everything that the Lord revealed unto Moses, we don't have. Listen. All right. And I taught him, verse five and second, verse 14. And I told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end. And commanded him, saying, These words shall thou declare, and these words shall thou hide. Okay, so so Moses received a whole hell of a lot of history. He received prophecies. He received a lot, all right, that we ourselves don't have. The Heavenly Father told Moses to declare certain things, and certain things uh, don't write, all right? As I'm sure he has some things scribed down, some things he wrote himself, but ultimately, the Lord revealed himself unto Moses who was of the tribe of Levi all right and um he allowed him to see you know up into the you know the 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 cloud the chariot he shared unto him some very very important history this is how we have Genesis Exodus Leviticus numbers Deuteronomy okay leading into the book of uh Joshua and all of that okay Moses is the one See, so the Bible is a very, very abridged version what Moses gave us of the all the history he got. So it's very important that you understand that the Bible, 
All right. There's a lot of extrapolation you have to do, but it has to be spiritually discerned and it has to ultimately be guided with faith. OK, if, if you don't have faith. All right. Ultimately, none of this is going to mean anything to you. And you're going to always try to figure out a way uh, uh, to push doubt. OK, we believe the things that we believe first and foremost through faith. All right. And this is our history as Israelites given unto us by our forefather Moses, by the hand of the most high through his angel. All right. Who was in control the whole time. This is how we have the Bible unto this day. People make this big fuss. Well, man had this and man had that. But overall, the most high was in control. As a matter of fact, let's get Isaiah 34. So if it's not mingled with faith which that, that can only be obtained by the elect, then uh, ultimately uh, you're wasting your time. This is Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. None of these shall fail. None of these shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded and my spirit have gathered them. Okay? His mouth commanded. His spirit gathered them. And he cast them for, uh, uh, cast a lot for them. And his hand have divided it unto them by line, and they shall possess it forever from generation to generation, shall they dwell therein. So we would have the book. We would have the understanding. We would have what we needed to have a connection with our power and put things together. All right. Thus saith the Holy Scripture. So we believe through faith all of what we have. All right. Is ultimately pure and uh, uh, ordained through the Holy Spirit, although we know and understand the English language is off. We can go into the Bible and find out that it's good to go into the original uh, uh, scrolls and scripts and language to get a better understanding of a lot that uh, take place in the Bible. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into Genesis, the 38th chapter, um, and we're just going to read through it. Um, it's uh, it's not that long of a read. Uh, I know I pretty much already talked a lot, but uh, these are things that must be known. Like you can't just open the book of Matthew without having a, a, a someone show you and understand to you what happened before. OK, so Genesis 38 and one Judah and Tamar. <laughs> All right. The chaotic origins of Judah, it says, and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Harah. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. So the story starts off with Judah getting some box from a Canaanite woman. All right. And when you look at the Judite man, all Israelite men, all right, we always find ourselves at some point in our lives, you know, to where uh box or sex or women just it, it just presents itself to you well this is how the story of judah starts off okay <laughs> he he went down from his brethren and he he saw uh an, an, an adulamite whose name was hara all right and judah saw eventually a, a, a certain canaanite whose name was shuha okay so his 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 story immediately starts with him running in the women. I thought that that was interesting because that's just how Judah operates, you know. And um, you know, Judah is made fun of because you know they like Judah, you know, going around the earth having all of this sex, you know, going to Vietnam and just leaving a seed everywhere. Well, that's just the spirit the Lord put on us. It said our buckets would be in many waters. Now we're living in a cursed state. So it works against us to, you know, go and have all of this sex and lay with all of these women. But that's the spirit, ultimately, that's always been on the Judite man, the Israelite man, period. But we know how Judah gets down, all right? It's 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 uh, like an unstable, <laughs> you know, uh, beauty. It says, um, and Judah saw there a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, all right? And I guess y'all going to rebuke him, right? And took her and went in unto her. He had sex with her. And she conceived and bare a son and called his name Ur. All right. Now, the question is, is Ur a Judite? All right. Or is was the uh, was the seed 
uh, uh, polluted and now we no longer have a Judite. No, Ur was a, a Judite. Let's look up his name. All right. But his mother was a Canaanite because the father, all right, has the XY chromosome and he determines the sex and the race of the child. Or should I say the race and the sex of the child is determined by the uh, father, the seed. Ira, it means awake, eldest son of Judah, son of Shelah, grandson of Judah. So he was a Judite. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's see um, if we can go to any lineage other than this one and see his name. Numbers 26 and 19, the sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. But there you go. Now, y'all say, well they, well, they died because they, they weren't. No, they died, as you'll see within the story, because the Lord just took their spirits back to the spirit world. One died for some wickedness. But there you go. All right. The, the, these were sons of Judah. All right. And you have many Israelite men who lay with heathen. All right. And what came from that. All right. Was um, Israelites. We just looked at the history of the charts of Judah. OK. Uh, uh, Rehoboam's mother was an Ammonite. So how did he sit on the throne of David? All right. And rule through uh, Judah if he wasn't an Israelite. He was an Israelite, man. He just had a heathen mother. All right. And um, while it is. um it's scriptural, all right, and it's nothing wrong with pushing to be with your own, all right, but Israelite men historically have laid with heathen women, and whether you're mad about it or not, we're reading about it. It's nothing you can do. It's it's already written, and if all of what you all are saying is true, then Yahweh Shah himself isn't a pure Judite because you had many of those Israelites who laid with heathen women to bring forth their son who would sit on the throne of David, Okay. So Yahweh Shai is a pure seed of Judah. It's not an altered, weakened seed. It's a seed of Judah. How about that? All right. So this is the book of Genesis 38 and 4. And me, myself, I love, I like, I prefer Israelite women. All right. But we can't go and use our emotions to push a doctrine as if the truth of the thing ain't the truth of the thing. The seed of the father determines the nationality of the child. Point blank, period. All right. And she conceived again and bare a son and called his name Onan. All right. And who's the, the, the she? Shua. OK. Which was this uh, Canaanite woman Judah lay with. And when she yet conceived again, she bare a nun and son and called his name Shalah. And he was at Chazib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife, all right, for Er, his firstborn, or Ira, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. So pretty much Judah, all right, as the, the, the order as to what, be fruitful and multiply, that was very important, okay? He was like, well, I'm going to have a wife for my son, okay, from amongst his family line named Tamar. Let's look up Tamar. Get her name meaning. All right. Thamara. All right. Tamara. <laughs> Thamara means palm tree. Okay. There you go. The widow of Urs, uh, the son of Judah, fiance of Shelah, another son of Judah, wife of Judah, mother of Perez and Zerah. All right. So it means palm tree. There you go. All right, and what comes out of the tree? Uh, fruit. Okay. So it says, um, whose name Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. So Judah has this son. He's like, all right, I'm going to get my son a wife so that my seed line can continue in the earth. Okay. And Ur. Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord and the Lord slew him. So he was slew for being wicked. The Lord took him back 
to the spiritual realm. It had nothing to do with the fact that his mother was a heathen and he was just wicked. Okay? It says, And Judah said to Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. All right, which this goes to the Leveriate law. All right, as a matter of fact, let's see if the precept leads us to that law. Yep. Let's see here. Yep, Deuteronomy 25 and 5. This is the Leveriate law. All right, and we don't have to read the whole thing. But if you have a brother and y'all dwell together, okay, and he dies, all right, but he has no son, all right, he has a wife, but he doesn't have a son. He dies, okay? The fact that he has no son, you would have to then go into that woman, okay? And you would have to put a seed in her so that she can eventually raise up a son for the purpose of inheritance, land rights, and business, okay? <laughs> This is uh, Deuteronomy 25 and 5. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. Now, Sadnetter mocked this and said it was nasty and crazy. But don't you know this is still practiced in Africa? And again, this is the, as, as the scriptures say, uh, as Apostle Tahar talks about the nastiness of the law. If we really brought the law out, most of you Israelites will say you hate it the most high. When we go into the law, it is totally contrary to how you will raise and how you think things should go. So most of you Israelites boast in the law, but then when you go into the law, you don't want to have nothing to do with it and you deem it crazy. Because really you have a problem with the most high. Okay? Her brother, her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. This is a law. Now, if she had a son already, all right, you wouldn't have to do that. Everything would just fall onto the, uh, the, the that son. And it shall be. All right. So it's not like you do my brother dead. Let me get the, the I mean, let me smash. This was for the sake of inheritance. And it shall be that the firstborn which she buried shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out in, of Israel. OK, because he may have a land. He may have, you know, a, a part in, of inheritance that was promised unto him. So now that has to be passed down. OK. Um, and if he refuses, the scriptures say, if he refuses to lay with his brother's wife, um, then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand not to it and say, I don't want to lay with her, then shall his brother's wife come in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off her foot and shall spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto the man that will not build up the house of his brother. So if the brother was like, nah, I'm not going to do it, you take off your shoe with shoes in ancient custom was synonymous with the transfer of land and things like that, when you take your shoe off, um, and she would spit in his face, all right? And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that hath his shoe loosed, which goes back to a custom. So there you go. So they were practicing this law. Again, this was given unto us by Moses, right? The law, okay? But we see this being practiced here, in the book of Genesis 38 and 9, showing you that the laws were oral back then. Before the laws were written on stone, the laws were oral. Adam was given the laws. When it says he was given the breath of life, he was given order. Okay? The priesthood, the sacrifice, all of that was passed down from him through Abel, who was slew then through Seth and so forth. All right? And eventually it was all restored unto Abraham. All right. Who had Isaac and Jacob. OK, who uh, ultimately had the 12 sons. So we see those customs and ways were being taught. All right. So let's read verse uh, eight again. Genesis 38 and eight. And Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan, Onan knew that the seed should not be his. 
And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should uh, give seed unto his brother. So let's read this in the NLT. <laughs> so Judah pulled out, okay, which is uh, <laughs> something Judah uh is good at and not good at in this time. I just say it like that. Um, what am I looking for? Okay, let's look, read this in the NLT. But on Onan was not willing to have a child who would not be his own heir. All right, he's like, why am I going to raise up? All right, being a nigga. Okay, why am I going to raise up a, a, a child for him to get his inheritance so uh, my father can do what he had planned with him. And I want to, no, he's just being a nigga. That's what Jake does. This is Jake. This is the chaotic origins of Judah. And if you got a problem with it and you think that the Bible was based upon some men who were floating around, you know, uh, uh, passing incense around, humming all goddamn day, then you, you crazy. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. It would be an heir to raise up into the inheritance for his brother. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he emitted on the ground lest he should give an heir to his brother. So he pulled out. All right. So he pulled out and spilled on the ground. OK, which we were in our we were we were in a, in a uh, we were, you know, in a higher estate back then. <laughs> So he screamed, ah, all on the ground. Juice everywhere, right? And the thing which he did displeased Yahweh, wherefore he slew him up also. All right? So the Lord put two of the children to death. Two of Judah's firstborn were put to death. All right? So how do you think this 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 particular uh these events took a toll on Judah. These are his children. He like, damn, <laughs> you know, which Judah goes through that today. All right. Seeing their children just slew before their eyes, getting shot. All right. Being wicked. All right. We, we witnessed this in our own neighborhoods today. Fathers can't enjoy their children. And Judah has it harder then a lot of the tribes, all right, all of the tribes caught hell, but Judah catches a, a, a different kind of hell. Because you got to remember, these are the niggas who said, let his blood be upon us. They were face to face with Yahweh Shai, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And were directly a, a part of councils that led to him being crucified, which was or the Heavenly Father wanted. But hey, they, the way they, it was wicked. The Lord used them to do wickedness. But anyway... So the Lord was displeased and put his ass to death. <laughs> so here it is. You have Tamar who was promised to Ira. All right. But he, he, he was wicked. OK, so then Judah told Onan, his other son, to go and put a seed in her for him. All right. And this is all to do what? Continue forth uh, the, 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 the seed line of Judah. OK. And Onan knew that the seed would not be his, yada, yada, yada. So we're here at verse 11. Then said Judah unto Tamar, his daughter in law, remain a widow at thy father's house. Go back to your father's house. Tell Shalah, my son, be grown. His other son. <laughs> his other son uh, uh, be grown. Right. Stay here till he grows up. All right, because look, I plan on my seed line continuing. All right, so go go chill at your your, your father's house. All right, it says, till he be grown, lest preadventure he die also as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. So she went back to her father's house. So in the process of time, okay. The daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. Okay? Going back to this, uh, what? This, uh, Canaanite woman. She died. 
right? So Judah then seen two of his sons die. Now his his wife dies. The woman who he had children by dies. This Canaanite woman. All right. And um, let's go back here. Genesis 38 and 12. And in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up into the sheep shears to Timnah, he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. All right. So he and his friend, all right, were traveling. Let's read this in the NLT. All right. It says some years later, Judah's wife died. And the time of mourning was over. Judah and his friend Hira, the Adulamite, went up to Timnah to supervise the shearing of his sheep. All right. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father in law goeth up to Timnah to hear his sheep. Now, remember, Tamar is waiting, all right, to be linked with one of Judah's sons. She's waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, she got a little impatient. She hears about, you know, uh, uh, Judah's wife dying. And she hears that, you know, he's going up to Timnah to, you know, handle some business. All right. It says Timnath. Let's look up Timnath just to, you know, just because we're looking at it. There's nothing wrong with learning. Thamana. Portion, a town and northern boundary of Judah, later assigned to Dan, a town in the hill country of Judah. Okay. So that's a particular land. All right. It says, um, so when she heard that he went up there and she put her widow's garment off from her. All right. So when your husband dies. All right. Back then, there were particular garments you would put on to show you in the morning. There were particular garments you put on to show that you were married or betrothed. There were particular garments you put on if you were a virgin. OK. It says. And she put her widow's garments from off her. And covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place. So she covers herself and goes and sits. All right. In an open place. All right. Which when you go back to the customs of that time, which are still practiced in eastern countries, women who were uh, street walkers or harlots in a sense. All right. They would, you know, go to street corners and women who needed money for sex. They would use their their bodies as a um, <laughs> business. All right. They would dress in particular uh, clothing. All right. And men that saw them will walk up. All right. And say how much. All right. Which is getting ready to happen here in this story. OK. Let's read it. It says. And she sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. So she went and sat somewhere where she knew Judah would see her. For she saw that Salah was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. So here it is. Shelah is grown. Tamar has been through two of the supposed husbands dying. Okay, now she lies grown and she like, look. All right, so what does the so-called black woman do? She figures out and fig thinks up a plot. <laughs> All right, she thinks up a plot and she goes and sits in an open place knowing that uh, uh, Judah's wife just died. All right, and when you go into ancient customs, when a man's wife died, OK, uh, after his morning, he would go and get a harlot. He would go and deal with, a, you know, uh, Samson did it. All right. And I remember reading that that's that was, those were customs. All right. Where uh, a man want, when he was uh, mourning his wife, he would go and, and, and uh, either his friends would present him with a with a with a woman or he would go and deal with a harlot, you know, which. um when you go into the scriptures, there's two kinds of harlots. You have temple harlotry, okay, which was forbidden and wicked and evil. All right, and then you have just everyday harlots who may have been kicked out of their father's houses. All right, and they became the quiches and shaniquas of the society. All right, although it was not a uh, the way you want things to go. I mean, we're it's a result of a fallen world. All right, you had particular women who did this. 
And that's how they took care of themselves. Hell, when Solomon uh, performed his first judgment, it was between two harlots. But when you look up that name harlot in that scripture, it's different from the one that you read about in uh, the law where it says there shall not be a, a, a whore, temple prostitution, which is associated with idol worship, and regular everyday street walkers where they're different. Okay, and while it wasn't highly praised, all right, scripturally, even Yahweh shall tell you, particular harlots are going to be delivered. Okay, so harlots were always a part of the world. All right, maybe you may be mad about it. All right, I myself don't like harlots, but they were there. All right, and we're just reading the Bible. And this is the thing we go into these ancient customs and stories, and you all get mad. All right, because what you want to do is link what you've grown to know and understand as truth to the eastern way the west and the east don't mix see again let's go to the scripture real quick before we uh, go down let's go to this book of second corinthians the fourth chapter because here it is we bring out these ancient customs and i'm just reading the story and you israelites lose your mind like what do you want me to do i, I, I wasn't born i'm just reading to you what happened and see, a lot of you think this Bible is just this squeaky clean, you know, you read it and it's supposed to be everything's perfect. No, the, the, the Bible is full of ups, downs, chaos. What do you think? Uh, look at the nation of Israel today. That which is then is now. But the Lord used these chaotic uh, situations and in, in, in the chaos and he still is able to bring forth beauty. <laughs> Second Corinthians four and three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right. Yes. Particular notable men in the Bible that dealt with harlots sometimes. Get over it. This is your forefather. What are you, you going to tell him? Uh, what are you going to do? Jump into the story and tell him he shouldn't have tried to do it. He, he, he was wicked. Anyway, so that's that's why it's important to when you this is why the Bible must be taught by one who isn't um, uh, emotional. OK, and this is why a lot of you Israelites have a problem with, with Great Millstone. We bring out these particular things and we're labeled either uh, the now we're telling all Israelite men they got to have a harlot. And now we're telling all Israelite men they can go rape women because we bring out ancient customs. But really, the problem is you have an issue with the Heavenly Father and you, you really have an issue with the Bible in its purest form. You want to present this squeaky clean image of the Bible? No, we're reading about the line of Judah already. It's chaotic. Already, it's all over the place. Here it is. Judah is getting ready to lay with the, the, the very <laughs> woman that was promised unto his sons that died. And that was promised unto his other son who ultimately, you know how Jake is. Jake is procrastinators. Judah is a big time procrastinator. So Judah was supposed to link this woman with his son and he was procrastinating. But then his wife died. So, he, you know, his mind is elsewhere. So Tamar is like, look, I'm sitting here. I'm ready to get it in. I'm ready to, you know, you know, she's a woman. I'm ready to bring forth. See, I want to be linked to this line. I want to, you know, she wanted to perform her duty that was promised unto her. So look what she does. All right. Genesis 38 and 14. And if you got a problem with it, just turn the video off, man. Tired of you emotional, big lip niggas, man. Always complaining and crying. Sheesh. It's just reality. It is happening right now unto this day. Who ordained it? Everything uh, uh, that's happening in the earth and everything we're reading about right here was ordained by the most high God, Yahweh, as crazy as it may seem. See, the Lord's thoughts ain't your thoughts. Genesis 38 and 14, and she put her widow's garment off from her. So grow up and mature. That's the only way you're going to get this thing. And covered her with the veil and wrapped herself and set in, in an open place, which was by by the way to Timnath, where Judah was headed with his homie. For she saw Shelah was grown 
and she was not given unto him to wife. She like, F this, I'm going to take things into my own hand. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. All right. And again, let's look up this word harlot. Okay. Zana. Okay. To commit fornication and be a harlot, to play the harlot, forced into prostitution. You had some women who were forced into prostitution because they were cut off from their families. All right. They, they shamed the family's name. The father said, we no longer have no dealings with this woman. And she would be the Keisha and Antoinette and, and Waukesha and, 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 and Neve, uh, Shankridra of the hood. All right, you are them. You think they? You think Felicia just popped up in Friday? No, these people were in the, in our nation, going all the way back here. That's what happened when you go and read about the uh, the, the, the prostitutes. A lot of them were cut off from their families, and this is how they took care of themselves. And then at the time of Solomon, how do you think they were even able to get into the king's court? Because this is something that happened to where he made that judgment between the baby. All right. Because one of them <laughs> slept on their, their child and, and the child died. So she stole the other's child. And Solomon had to judge in between that. So you see that word for prostitute. But then let's look up this word. Right. Which, again, this is all a result of of a fall. All right. And, and, and when we get into the kingdom, we ain't going to have to deal with none of this amongst our nation. This is the book of Deuteronomy 23 and 17. There shall not be a whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons uh, of Israel. When you look up this word whore and there's other scriptures that go into it is Kadasha, a female temple prostitute harlot. OK, this is associated with uh, uh, left hand idols and temple harlotry. All right. What you can you go into is a sacred prostitute. OK. And you can go into the scriptures. OK. And, or you can go into history. You know, if somebody want to look it up and find something they can find on temple harlots. But the, the two differ. All right. The two differ. All right. So Judah thought her to be in harlot. Judah saw Tamar with her face covered. He didn't know who she was. He was like, look, I'm going to give me. Man. Shit, I'm, I'm. <laughs> so when he saw her, he thought her to be in harlot because she had her face covered. OK. And he turned unto her, by the way, and said, go to, I pray thee, come let me come in unto thee for he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law so he sees the lady he like hey look let, let me let me you know what's up <laughs> let me let me let me smash something <laughs> <laughs> and she said what will thou give me that thou mayest come into me so what you gonna give me all right so let's read this in the nlt I know your mouth is open and you looking crazy like, wait a minute, man. Yes, it's in the Bible. So he stopped and pro pro propositioned her. All right. He gave her an ultimatum. Let me have sex with you, he said, not realizing that she was his own daughter-in-law. So already in this story, uh, Judah, is, is he, he, he's, he, he likes it. He likes it raw. All right. He... he, he this is uh, this is this is the tr uh, the head tribe of uh, uh, the head man of the tribe of Judah. Asking the harlot for some box. How about that? Let the church say amen. All right. He said, not realizing she was his own daughter in law. How much will you pay to have sex with me? Tamar asked. How much? How much you got? This sounds like a regular proposition on East 14th in Oakland, California, all right, or, or San Pablo in Oakland, California, all right, which East 14th is now international, right? But in, in whatever city you brothers are from or you sisters listening, this, this, this happened, 
happened, you saw it in your time, we're showing you that it happened back then. And, and one of the men trying to get, get down was Judah. So he saw her and thought her to be an harlot. And, he, and ultimately, you see the, the conversation in verse 17 says, And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge? All right, till uh, thou send it. So Judah, he was a man of substance. You got to understand, uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all had substance. OK, they weren't just these broke as, you know, they, they were a family of they, they had substance. So he was like, well, look, I'll give you a kid from the flock, you know, and pretty much, you know, you'll be able to use that to you know, either sell it or, you know, uh, you know, there's a, a lot you could do, you know, if you got, you know, once it grows up to a certain age. And it says and she said, well, thou give me a pledge till I send it over. So let's NLT this. OK, it says, I will send you a young goat from my flock, Judah promised. But what will you give me to guarantee that you will send that goat? She asked. So she's a thinker. And the so-called black woman is very good with schemes. That's why they're good with those taxes. All right. They're good with that credit repair. OK. Uh, and just like uh, uh, Jacob's mother, um, Rebecca, you know, they uh she she helped Jacob to come up with that plot to you know for dangle the the birthright anyway <laughs> so and he said what pledge shall i give thee and she said thy signet which is thy ring and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand and he gave it to her so he was horny he was like look i got to have it my wife dead look let me, let, you know, here, take, take the signet, take the bread. I can go get more of these and take the staff. All right. As a pledge. All right. And then I'm going to go get the goat and then give me my stuff back. And he came in unto her and she conceived by him. So he, he left it in. Okay. It says he arose and went away and laid by her veil from her. And he and hold up, hold up. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of widowhood. So she got what she wanted. So she went back home and she put the veil off. All right. Which is like, where do you get that veil from? What are you doing? Which they had veils for other reasons, too. But that was one of the things prostitutes did to hide themselves. All right. But they would stand somewhere to show that. Look. All right. Well, I, I need money. So. Look, uh, you know, if you can give me something, I can give you something. That was their way of business. You got a problem with it. They call it the oldest uh, profession. All right. Because it, it, it's always been, man. And it's showed up. It's shown up in the Bible a few times as well. It says. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite. To receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. So he go back to get his bracelet. Okay, uh, he go back to get his staff. He like, wait a minute, I, I'm, I brought the goat. What the fuck? Where was she at? All right. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, "Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside?" And they said, "There was no harlot in this place." Okay. They're like, "Ain't no, no harlot over here." And he returned to Judah and said, I could not find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. So he's like, where the hell is she at? And Judah said, let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid and thou hast not found her. All right. I know you have questions. I know you're like, well, damn, did he? He smashed her. She she left the veil on. <laughs> yeah. All right. But also, too, again, this is abridged. All right. And this all must be received with faith. And when we get to the kingdom, the Lord is going to show us the whole thing. He's going to show us from Genesis to Revelation. All right. Even our awakening as a movie, I believe. We'll get everything. Even the, soul, the, 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 the lost books. We'll have everything back. 
All right. But the Lord left us the Bible for the purpose of us having faith. All right. The way that the Bible was written, it, it's a book that must be received with faith above all. OK, that's why things were left out. All right. And you have to extrapolate. You have to put yourself in the moment. All right. It, it's, it's very it's very spiritual. All right. So it came to pass about three months later. That it was told Judah saying Tamar, thy daughter in law, hath played the harlot also. Behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt. So. Although he procrastinated with linking her to his son, Shalah. All right. Uh, he, he finds out that Tamar is pregnant, but he doesn't know he is the one that got her pregnant. So he said when he found out she is with child by whoredom, meaning she was betrothed to your son and she went and lay with another man. Right? <laughs> Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt, which this is a law. Okay, as well. Let's see here. Let's see here. I know it's uh Yep. Leviticus twenty one and nine and the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing a the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. So if the daughter of a priest went and played the whore, she would be burned with fire. OK, showing you that the priesthood would eventually come from Judah. All right. And showing you that the priesthood and the laws were already in stake before they were written uh, uh, on stone given unto Moses. So <laughs> this is a family of priests. OK, although Judah weren't the priest, but as you can see, the law still abides okay so judah was like bring her here and we're gonna burn her ass okay now imagine seeing that the, the you know y'all think that the uh the 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 rape law is is a lot well how about a whore if you was to of a particular family a priest namely and you got it caught out there all right you you didn't have uh you were burned alive. Like imagine seeing a woman burned alive for being a whore. So Nicki Minaj, all of these women, just imagine the the ones who were, uh, uh, you know, of that priestly <laughs> line and daughters of, 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 of Levites. Imagine. Imagine what we would be seeing today happen to, to these women. But we're crazy. See, what you'll find out about a lot of you Israelites is that you really hate the most high and you hate his judgments. It's just that when we bring them out, all right, you use the Western way of thinking to condemn us and gain followers. Because most of the Israelites that come into this truth will never really fully understand this truth. A lot of them just know that they're Israelites and they get the fringes. But when it comes into the depth of what the Bible is about and the, uh, the reality of things, they're not interested like that. Only the elect are going to get into these types of things. All right. And go and do the study. And even when you're offended, understand that, damn, OK, well, that's how it happened back then. Oh, damn, that did happen. I wouldn't do that. But hey, this is hey, damn, it did happen. Touche. All right. And you should, you should let it go. All right. It's a, it's a level of maturity that you must have as well to understand uh, this book. OK, so it says here. So she was summoned to be burned. And when she was brought forth. She sent her father in law. Saying by the man whose these are, I am with child. All right. So what did she do? She brought forth the bracelet. Remember the, the bracelet, the staff. Uh, let's see the signet ring, the bracelet and the staff that she had. OK, she to get to protect herself was like, well, look. All right. Um, let's read this in the NLT and we almost done. Um, it says. 
but as they were talking to uh talking her out as I'm sorry, but as they were taking her out <laughs> to kill her, she sent this message to her father in law. The man who owns these things made me pregnant. Look closely. Whose seal and cord and walking stick are these? Okay? So just imagine her in that situation. Like, damn, they about to burn me alive. All right, but check this out. And Judah acknowledged them and said, she have been more righteous than I. <laughs> because I gave her not to Shalom, my son. He, and he knew her no more again. So he was like, damn. Well, she got me. <laughs> she got me. Okay, she got me. And LT Judah recognized me immediately and said, she is more righteous than I. Because I didn't arrange for her to marry my son, Shalah. And Judah never slept with Tamar again. All right, so I know there's all of these questions. Well, well, what this? What this? So he never left with, lay with her again. What did she do? Yada yada yada. Well, you'll just we'll we'll just have to see. All right, but this is what the Lord did. This is what we do know. He knew her no more again. He didn't lay with her again. And said, and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold, twins were in her womb. So here you go, twins. Again, a set of twins within our nation. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying the, this first came out. All right. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold, his brother came out. All right. So here it is. This baby comes out of the womb, puts his hand out. The midwife puts a, a, a ribbon on it to show which one was the firstborn because they were twins. Um, and they didn't have to do that with Jacob and Esau because it was a color distinguished. Anyway, it says that his brother came out and she said, how hast thou this thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore, his name was called Ferez. So let's read that in the NLT. It says, but he then he pulled back his hand and out came his brother. What? The midwife exclaimed. How did you break out first? All right. So his name was called Ferez, which is uh, Parataza. Let's get that. Parataza. So this, this is a very chaotic story, right? This ain't just no uh, love story. It's like, whoa. So he laid with <laughs> the woman who was promised to his children. He laid with the woman who did lay with his sons. Like, what What the hell? <laughs> yes. That's what the Lord did. What are you, you going to do, nigga? It says, Parataza. <laughs> Breach. All right. Twin son with Zerah of Judah by Tamar, an ancestor of the two families of Judah, the Hezronites and the Hamulites. All right. From the Hezronites came the royal line of David and the Messiah. All right. It gets no higher than the Messiah. Right. So. He was called Ferez. Okay. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread up on his hand and he was called Zerah. Let's see what that means just for the sake of it. Zerah. Rising. Okay, twin brother of Perez and Ta uh, sons of Judah and Tamar, descendants. Zerites, Ezrites. All right, so. Maybe we'll go into the Hezronites. Uh, one day because that's where eventually David will come and eventually the Messiah so again if you cross reference this story should take you to the book of Ruth no so what I'll do give me one second here <laughs> let's go to the book of uh, had hold up I didn't what I was looking for I had Mm 
This is what I'll do. We'll go to Ferez. And then that should link you to Ruth. Boom. So Ruth, boom. All right. So when you get the book of uh, Boaz, all right, who he was of the loins and lineage of Judah through Ferez. Okay. Uh, when you read this story, all right, his uh, one of his family members who died owned the land, which is Bethlehem. Okay. And eventually Boaz acted as the kinsman redeemer. He, he, he kept the law. Okay. All right, but instead of going into Naomi, okay, who was old by the time and it wouldn't have made sense, he went into Ruth. <clears throat> Ruth was a Moabite, okay, and he lay with her and eventually the land was redeemed. All right, it was supposed to go to another relative, all right, but eventually, uh, let's see here. Yep. He bought the field of Naomi. All right. And you can we got lessons on this, but the the point is Boaz who's of this lineage, lineage got that land and kept the law, acted as kinsman redeemer. He laid with Ruth and from the union of him and Ruth um as we're going to show you came forth uh Obed who had Jesse, who had David. All right? So this is the book of uh, Ruth, chapter four and 11. I'll start at 10. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of uh, Malhan, who he died, have I purchased to be my wife. All right. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So he fulfilled that law. All right. That the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of this place, ye are witnesses unto this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. All right. Yahweh make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah. All right. Who brought forth the 12 tribes. All right. Uh, the, the were responsible for birth and forth. All right. Uh, the, the, the men that will be the patriarchs of the family. All right. Uh, Ruth would be used to bring forth the man that will eventually continue this this lineage and so that eventually the Messiah can be born. Eventually, David, Solomon and the Messiah and that we can have Bethlehem, which is where they were born. So this is a very important book to understand how the seed line was always being tracked of the Messiah it says. The Lord, which uh, uh, the Lord make the woman which is coming to thine house like Rachel and Leah, which did build up the house of Israel and do thou worthily in Ephrata, all right, that land and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bare unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. And that seed would eventually be. Obed okay so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife and when he went unto her the Lord gave her conception she conceived just like Mary conceived and she bare a son and the women said unto Naomi blessed be Yahweh which have not left thee this day without a kinsman that his name may be famous in Israel and that's going to be eventually through Yahweh Shai and he shall be upon thee a restorer of thy life all right. And a nourisher of thine own age for thy daughter in law, which loveth thee, which is better than thee than seven sons hath borne him. OK, so Naomi wasn't able to do it, but the heavenly father used Ruth. OK, to what lay with that kinsman and redeem that land and fulfill the law. OK. To bring forth that seed. The line of David began here. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and uh, became nurse unto it. And when the uh, neighbors gave it a name saying there is a son born to uh, Naomi. 
all right, which Ruth was used as the woman to bring forth that child. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. See what Obed means. Servant. I bod. I wabod. Serving. Okay. Serving. Like I bod ya, Obadiah. All right. I bod. Serving. Okay. So. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez got Hezron, Hezron begot Ra'am, Ra'am begot Aminadab, Aminadab begot Nashan, Nashan begot Salmon, Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. Okay? Which, there you go. When you get uh, the book of Matthew, this is the lineage. <laughs> okay? Judah. All right? The genealogy of the Messiah showing you he came from this seed line through his father who was of the loins and lineage of David. OK, although his mother was of David as well of that line. All right. Notice it, it, it continuously tells you Joseph. OK. Let's just type in Joseph David. OK. It, it continues to tell you. OK, or, or show you that Joseph is of the, the of that line. The virgin was espoused to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. OK, Yahweh Shai's birth, it, it keeps letting you know, look, the, the, the Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. All right, because Yahweh Shai is that one that was that root of Jesse. OK, which, as you can see here. Okay, Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and his brethren, Judah begot Perez and Zerah of Tamar, Perez begot Esram, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king, David the king begot Solomon, and as you get down, to the point, Matthew 1 and 16, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shai, who was called the Messiah. OK, of who was born. OK, let's look at this word born. All right. Genao, gene. OK, men who fathered children to be born, to be begotten. OK, to arise, to excite. OK, so there you go. To be delivered. So Jacob begot Joseph, who begot Yahawashai through Mary. Okay? And there's so much history dealing with the uh, lineage of Judah that we weren't able to go into today. All right? But um, Lord willing, when the time permits, we'll go into some of these kings because reading about these kings... And there was actually a woman, too, who sat on the throne for a little while. Athalia, her wicked ass, um, she tried to cut off the seed line. But you'll see that the, 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 the history of Judah, all right, is not this peaches and cream story as they try to make the Bible out to be. It's, it's full with many ups and downs, all right, but, but, but uh, it's a very beautiful and spiritual story. And we're going to stop there. And Lord willing, we'll be back with more uh, edification, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rechach double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.